video series on editing to tempo in my workstation. In part one we looked at how to use the tools within my workstation to align a track and use some online tools and calculators to get the values that we needed to fill in for my workstation. In this part we'll look at how to use Audacity to get a more detailed ad edit and also to uh, generate a click track. So let's get started with that. What we're going to do then is we're going to go into Audacity. So Audacity's here and let's open this pitch shift. Actually I've moved it so I'm going to get it from the folder. Just a moment. Okay, and we'll read it from disk. So here's our track in Audacity. Okay, and here we can get much more detailed as far as our zoom, see where our beginning points are. Now, the best thing to do here is to go ahead and make a label track at this very first beat. Right? You can see the beat in the waveform. Now, that's going to be the point at which we uh, track to. So, let's go ahead and add a label right there. And we'll use that to, to align our other tracks. So, what we're actually going to do inside of here is we're going to generate a click track. Right? So, we want to go ahead and insert another track. We'll add a new stereo track and we can shrink these down because we have a limited screen space for the video and we'll shrink these way down so we can see them alright so I want to be at the point where um, I pr made the label to give myself the first beat uh, one thing you want to do is you want to be sure that sync lock tracks is not checked that's remember between different opens but if you do that it's going to push the other track down in time for the length of what we have and, and we don't want that another thing we need to check quickly is the total duration of our audio file in this case it's 332 so if we went to 333 we'd be fine um, so let's go back to our label track here and select it then we want to generate a click track okay so we're going to use the value that we got from reading the uh, let's go ahead and get that again divide that by four uh, 165.38 right and that's what we want to use to generate the click track so we'll go under generate click track 165.38 okay four beats per measure now the optional click track duration so we said that this file was basically 333 in length right so that's 180 for seconds if we're converting to seconds that's 180 seconds plus 33 seconds okay so that's 213 seconds right so four beats per measure all this is fine and it, it's got the default values for the click sound and all that so let's go ahead and generate our track all right and we'll zoom out to see the whole duration as you can see it overlaps a little bit toward the end but that's not a big deal well let's see how synced we are <laughs> got problems with sync it's going to drift toward the end of the file you'll be able to tell a lot more okay now 
that seems reasonable. I'll accept that. So let's go ahead and zoom back in because within Audacity we'll go ahead and get our alignment to the beginning parts. So now we do want to sync all of these tracks. So we go under tracks, sync lock tracks. Now they're all synced together and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more right here okay and that's our one second mark so we're gonna move all of these tracks to align the label and the very first click to the one second mark so we use this tool and I'm gonna grab from here because that'll give me the display back just a little bit and I can zoom in even more even more it's when you're working with audio sometimes you want to be super detailed see in the very um, in-depth zoom I can see that I'm off okay now that should be perfect okay <laughs> We'll zoom back out. So what we need to do now that we've moved it a second is we need to assert some silence at that part so that when we export it, it has silence in the beginning. And that's easily done here in Audacity. So we'll go to our start point right here, drag out a selection, generate silence, and it reads our values. Then double click that to mix to um, put those two together merge them alright and we'll do that with our other track here and insert silence and merge them okay great so let's double click on this track because we're going to export the selection so we'll get just our audio by itself um, populating the list that's all right okay tutorials and we'll save it here um, on the run this silent do the same thing here with the click track click save that okay and that should give us a very accurate bit to sync to let's go back to my workstation we'll insert our sound files okay so we've got this one and one more click track there we go and you can hear that our initial sound file file that we just roughed out was actually pretty close so that's good to know um, That's, that's pretty well synced. Let's go toward the end. On the click track, it's not going to matter. It's static. Okay. There we go. I mean, basically, we have our synced audio now to um, an entrainment track. Now, we also, within this entrainment, could half this value um, let's do that real quick so we'll go 
11.025 divided by 2, right? Which would give us 5.5125. And we'll change that to 5.5125. Okay, and that's a half value, so that's within the theta range. <laughs> Now one thing worth noting here is um, that we may want to change the phase. Because the default mine workstation setting for isochronic tones is for the phase to start at 90, which is the top peak of the waveform. Uh, we may get better results. Let me just test if we started the phase at zero, at least at this slow. It's actually kind of just a preference thing. Um, I'm going to go back to the original. So anyway, that gives you two brainwave ranges to play with. So let's go back to 11.025 for our alpha range. But that gives you two options of how to sync audio. And then again, this is a simple track. So you may want to get more complex in detail uh, with other songs that you have that have more of a chorus structure, verse, chorus, bridge, structure, all of that. Now, one other thing you could do is you'll hear that there's a different tone uh, at the beginning of each measure. Now, maybe you would want to change the measure length. See, here it's set to beats per measure is four, so you're going to get that higher click every four beats. Now maybe to align with a larger bit to, to when you come back and you want to put in certain spectroscope effects at certain places, you'd want a longer measure to do that just so that you'd have that higher pitch, uh, say over a bar, uh, a full four bars, I mean, over four bars or eight bars or what have you. So just multiply that time the times the value that you want. So that'd be 16 beats if you wanted it every four bars and so on. All right, well, that finishes that tutorial, and I hope you find it useful. If you have any questions, go to mindplacesupport.com and ask a question there on the forum or put it in the comments here, and I'll be happy to help you, and good luck.